some old memories <laughs> that have lied dormant, like that Brady special where we did the, was it the, was it HR Puppet stuff? We did something. I believe it was during that filming, because I was trying to remember, we worked on the ABC lot, and then during that I have pictures of meeting the Jackson 5. And um, it was, I think, during the shooting of whatever that was, which I completely forgot about. <laughs> Um, so we had intersected, and now hearing Marty's take on what his his strategy was and finding individuals that had series right. that were well known, and then and then and then it, um, hiring them for his Saturday morning productions, I, I realized this was all just part of his master plan. You know, coming out because I, I, I look back on it, and go, why do we have all this intersection with the Crofts? Where, where did the Bradys and the Crofts? Because it wasn't just once; it was repetitively. And now I see it's by it was engineered by Marty to, to you know, really sort of grasp uh, grasp onto the Bradys because they were of you know or I, certainly I was of the right age probably doing this the, the variety show at this point younger than Jack Wild I mean, Jack Wild I think was 22 he looked like he was 12 but he was <laughs> like 22 or 23 doing uh, HR pump and stuff um, so it's starting to make more sense to me just coming here today. The reason I came here today is to learn something about my life. And I have. Um, <laughs> knew I did the variety show. I, I just didn't know why it was that I had had these previous experiences with the Crofts. Um, but the net result of doing the show was it failed. I mean, if, if getting to the next season is a success, it failed in that regard. But it, it laid in these... these these intangible memories of craziness that you know can only be explained as being, you know, Sid dreams or Croft experiences, <laughs> um, and they're really special, you know. Now that I look back, on it. and I, as much as I hated the music, I really kind of liked it. It was, it was. We had, we actually had fun. And then think about this. It's legendary now. I didn't know it at the time of the difficulties that Robert Reed had with a lot of the stuff that was written on the Brady Bunch. Um, and that, that relationship and how testy it got between Robert and Sherwood Schwartz is, is now well known. It wasn't known to us at the time. They were very good at keeping that from us. Uh, most of their fights were either not on set or after we had gone for the day. The kids had gone for the day. So none of us knew about it. Barry might have known something about it, but not to the degree. We now learn and have heard the stories. Um, he was, Bob was a wonderfully warm and supportive person uh, and a wonderful actor. And I understand now looking back on the show, Barry and I now do a, a podcast. It's a, it's a, it's a episode recap of watching the Brady Bunch. And we're having a gas doing it because I didn't think there was anything left to learn. <laughs> There's all kinds of stuff to learn. I mean, we're recounting like, oh yeah, that happened. Or he doesn't remember an episode. We haven't watched an episode in 50 years and we're doing a recap on it. And now we're coming up to speed with an audience that's been watching it for 50 right. years and we have. So, uh, you know, and, and laughing at it and... And, and, um, and the podcast is Brady Bros. So the real Brady Bros. Real Brady Bros. We couldn't get Brady Bros. Because uh, somebody had that. Oh, okay. So we're the real Brady Bros. And, you and get it's it everywhere. Apple, yeah. Apple, Apple. Anywhere YouTube, podcasts everything. are downloadable. So right. Check that out. In any case, uh, where was I? Because I'll do this. I'll ramble on. Get stuck in a dead <laughs> so, end. So, with the show, with the, the Cross show. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So, Bob Reed in this is a whole different view. I mean, he doesn't sing or dance at all, but he looked happier wearing fruit on his head <laughs> in the variety hour than he ever looked doing the Brady Bunch. <laughs> and how many episodes did you guys do? Um, the variety. The variety yeah. I believe we did eight episodes. Eight episodes. Eight episodes. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it was fun. I have so I'm going to tell kind of a blues little blue note here. So one of my um, recollections, um, special moments, uh, which I have this photograph. It's like a, it must have been a. Um, um, a network, a network photo, like there, you know, during the performance, it was with Charles. Mm. Um, Charles, in our particular skit, played kind of Cinderella in boots, <laughs> kind of like Western Cinderella. Barry wore a black hat. Literally, he was the bad seed, and I wore the white hat. 
good guy, bad guy. Um, and it, I try to save Cinderella, I jump and I grab her boot, and then we stop down. She leaves and I have her boot. A little Cinderella esque. <laughs> um, and when I grab her boot, I'm looking up. <laughs> and she was in back in the day. I mean, this is like, you know, um, uh, denim shorts. I mean, right, right. <laughs> nearly crotchless shorts. Um, and when you stop down, because there's a photo that made it all come back. I saw this photo, I go, oh my God, that's that moment. And then it all came flooding back. Because I put it out of my mind. It was like, I'm 19, a little bashful. And I'm looking up at Charo's soul. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm supposed to stare up. Because <laughs> the camera's got to wait. She's got to take her foot out. i got to freeze as I'm doing this. And I'm <laughs> just, I don't know what I'm going through. <laughs> it's a struggle to see and not see and to remember forever and, and never tell anyone, you know, but not really look, but look, it was, it was like, and then somebody had a photo that I saw years later of that very moment. Um, well, you saved it here for Croftcon, so everybody, first time you're yeah. that's, my, that's my most special Croft recollection. <laughs> So why don't we open it up for questions, because we know we have lots of questions for Chris. So, who's going to be first? Whoa, everybody's quiet. Okay, right there. Uh, was that, uh, that Time for Change song, was that really your voice cracking? <laughs> Time to Change. Okay, so here it is. So, 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 you know, we are, as children, who are sensitive, yeah. harbor thoughts about the world that are our own. And if you're introverted, you keep them to yourself. Even if it isn't what anybody else was thinking, it's your world. So I knew at this point that they knew that I couldn't sing. Because I mean, when you sit at a microphone and you got Michael and Barry, now that Barry wasn't really good to begin with, to be honest, when he did our Christmas album, he was pretty poor too, but he made it his life's mission to become very adept at music. Um, Michael had all this music, he was almost a musical prodigy with perfect pitch. I think we had three on the, on the cast that had perfect pitch. I had no pitch. I'm gonna hold a note in the glass, you know. So, we'd sing in unison and then I get this look from Michael. You know, and he's like, you know, three years younger than me. You know, he's looking at me like, you know, like, you know, and it's like, it's the best I can do, you know. Like, give me a break. And it's like, I figured, you know, what am I here for? I don't, I'm like this big. And I bet I get it all the time because, you know, I'm throwing him off. Um, so I viewed that show as them, in a strange way, telling the world that I couldn't sing by keeping me from just being melded in as one of a group by having my voice crack. Now when I watch the show, the show, the, the episode works, and it's funny. Yeah. And it wasn't anything like I thought it to be. It's just the mind of a child at, at work, you know? And, and but, but those kind of thoughts, you know, got the best of me um, in that kind of pressure cooker of a professional environment. So when we, the Brady kids, which what is that? That's a group of the five, the six of us, going out on our own to sing and dance in concerts with me and Tilton. Why, why, why? Well, because record labels would sign any, they literally said if you spit on an album, it will sell. You don't, I mean, and that was really even at, you know, 12 years old or 13, it was offensive. Um, but because I was part of this group that was gonna do this, I had to be part of it. But in, in, in live, Venues, they couldn't give me any, any solos. And I thought, you know, this, it, it, it's, it's noticeable that I'm not getting any solos because everybody else had them. <laughs> it just felt I was, in, I was in the wrong place. And so I quit all that. And then two years later or three years later, this thing comes up. So it was really a shock, I think, to all of them that I had said, yes, it's like, I thought you didn't want to ever do music ever again. It's like, I'm not here to do the music. I'm being forced to. <laughs> Sing us something. That's what he said. What's that? Sing something. 
What? Time to change. Oh, do you want to do the crack? Yeah. So my voice wouldn't change for three years later. Time to change. <laughs> it made it easier for me that week. I didn't have to, you know, record anything but a voice crack. <laughs> so another hand up right there. You know, I, I I don't I didn't hear all of your question, but I did hear uh, uh, the sunflower girl. So what was the question? Backlash from friends. No, I mean, it, I mean, in, back when I was, uh, see, that would have been like uh, in seventh grade or whatever, you know, twelve years old, twelve years old. No, I didn't. I mean, at twelve years old, you're going to get backlash just simply because you're on television, right? Because you're trying to be different than everybody else. Not that it was your choice. Um, so no, I didn't. In fact, I loved that episode. I loved like having to play that kind of, I mean, that kind of stuff all day long. Had no problem whatsoever. And made, being made fun at or of in school was not about anything you did. It was just doing it at all. Because as I learned, Everybody in school wants you not to stand out. Even when you're not trying to, you're gonna get in trouble for standing out. And you just, you just have to work that through. You just have to prove to everybody who's making fun of you, they just don't know you yet. And if over time, when you're no fun to be made fun of, because you don't react to it, they, they, they stop making fun. I throw another one right there. There's always talk of a Brady reunion. And there's something about the Brady's that it's sort of like representative of, of, uh, of an idea family that's, that's woven into the fabric of this nation. And uh, we're the last of that kind of aspirational family. Although there's been plenty of other shows, there's been eight is enough. And there, I would even say that the modern family is an example of you know, the modern example of a fan of an extended family. But there's something about the Brady's um, that so many people remember and now have not just their own family, but their families have families. So, yeah, there's maybe a chance. Let's see, you know, if that can be brought together again. Got to do it soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right there. Question. You can do that. Just don't make me say. My mouth is not the same shape as it was back when I was really able to do Humphrey Bogart. But I'll try. Pork chop. No, chop. Thank you, Liv. Yes. So when I get, and I'm not the only one, when we get asked this question, of course, the question is being mostly asked about the fan's point of view of watching the show. It takes years to watch a show objectively, <laughs> 50. Um, <laughs> so our answers aren't about watching the show. I mean, that's what Barry and I are now recognizing and illuminating in our podcast is we're watching the show for the first time in 50 years. It's been consumed endlessly by our fans and audience. Their view of the show is from that television, a screen, and watching a teleplay, if you will. We never even, we haven't seen it as a teleplay. We remember the doing of it. If we're lucky, we have memories of the experience of being there and having done it and the times away from the camera, you know, monkeying around, and, and really becoming sort of brothers and sisters. Um, so our answer is why? Because that's the experience, we, you know, why was an exotic place. We're sort of like these honorary Hawaiian um, uh, ambassadors now, because that was right as Hawaii 
people knew about Hawaii, certainly from, you know, wartime, but in, inexpensive or affordable travel had just, and the 747 really had uh, just entered service like two years earlier. The ability to take a family or to Hawaii was an exotic idea up until right around, you know, 1968 or so. And we projected that. And we projected that Hawaii was kind of affordable for an entire family, especially when your dad's architectural firm gets tickets for the entire family. Um, <laughs> as unbelievable as that was, it did turn, Hawaii became like a destination vacation place. Um, and we helped America discover that, that it wasn't just this exotic place that few people could get to. Um, but it was an exotic place nonetheless, and it was a great, I mean, we were locked in a set with plastic grass. So to get outside and actually shoot anything under the sun was, was, a, was a great experience. So up until Hawaii, it would have been the Grand Canyon for the same reason. So when you ask that, that's what we'll answer. If you ask us what's our favorite episode, you know, watching, that's a different story. And, um, I'm gonna have to, want, I just watched one the other day that I just loved, and I'm gonna have to remember which episode it was, that I literally might not have ever watched. And it was, it was uh, Getting Greg's Go, fifth season, I think it was the 10th, ninth show in the season. But it's with this, this um, Raquel, the Go, named Raquel because apparently, in the script named Raquel because Lloyd Schwartz at this point, Sherwood Schwartz's son, was an associate producer, and he loved Raquel Welsh. <laughs> so I now learn. <laughs> but it was just a cute little, it was a cute episode. And there's a lot of episodes that I now can watch with that kind of objectivity that I might be able to answer. I know for me, um, I've always thought to that point it would be Arthur, Arthur for, you know, playing two different, you know, the split screen back in the right, day right, right, before right. there was any optical <laughs> effects. I mean, I mean, sorry, before there was any digital effects, it was only optical effects. They literally have to cut the film down the middle. Um, and, and, and I took that, as that they that they had an episode with that much in it and, and and gave it to me from where I started. The first episode that they made a Peter episode out of was the um, uh, the hero saving a little girl in the toy store and then uh, <laughs> taking all the toys. <laughs> I, you know, there was a real, there was some, and I even recognized it. That was the first season, I was 11 years old. Um, I had a hard time speaking and, and, and it, so acting and speaking and moving <laughs> could only do two of those three, and they, you know. <laughs> uh, and they gave me all this, this dialogue. They would, you know, they were nervous that maybe I couldn't handle it. It all went well, but by you know Arthur Arthur, they gave me more dialogue and more more you know stuff that oh you know it's sort of like being you know being the quarterback on the bench getting a shot and then getting you know, to be a starter later. Right. It was that kind of feeling. It was like, that was, a, it was sort of a nod to me that that um, there was a great deal of trust. Good. Had a question right there? Uh, our guests are were great on the Brady Bunch. You know, frankly, when you're working in, when you're a kid on a series, working film style, uh, and it's in school year, you might never meet the guest star, because you're in school. If you're not in the scenes with them, your experience with them is limited. And I remember I was in very little of Joe Namath's episode. So, uh, but Joe Namath was a big enough star for us. It was allowed for us to make certain there was a moment to meet him. Frankly though, the, our stars in on the Variety Hour were sort of the biggest, um, Um, remembrance for me. I mean, Farrah Fawcett, Lee Majors at the time, Milton Berle, mm. of all people. Right. Um, it was wild. And then there were people that would hang out just because of, now I'm looking at it, the crops. Like Natalie Wood came and visited the set one day. Um, Chevy Chase came down, I guess. Uh, and these, these are all people that were you know, the fans of, of the Crofts. And they weren't on our show, they would just come down and visit. Although I do remember something differently. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. Or you tell me if I'm wrong. Did the Brady's come before Donnie and Marie? I remember them already being on the air. 
Yes. There was an episode of Dolly Marie where uh, Marie and Florence and uh, this is Mike were one. And it got amazing, amazing ratings. But they were guests on Donnie, on Donnie and Marie's yeah. show. Because I think in that little piece, Marty's got it backwards. He's got, we're do the Brady Bunch first, and from that they got Donnie and Marie. No, Donnie and Marie were already on the air, because I remember that. It's like, they got an ice skating rink. Yeah. You got a pool. You got a, how do you top that? <laughs> you have a pool. <laughs> you know, I don't know if there was a third show, what they, what would they have done? An Avery? You know, flying <laughs> people. They'd have made Avatar. <laughs> so speaking of that pool, you were thrown in that pool quite often. I so said, about do, that. you can get me wet, you know, just don't make me sing. <laughs> <laughs> Another question right there? Right, you're in. To participate in the, because I think we only participated in the first of the two Brady Bunch features. Um, yeah. I, you know, excited. The fact is that it was a whole different cast doing the Brady Bunch. So, in part, you're also recognizing your time is over. <laughs> you know, somebody else has now got your role. Uh, and you know, it was um, it was the Brady Bunch as sort of like the Mr. Magoo superhero kind. Of, it's a fish out of water story. So I remember one one fan telling me that they heard there was a Brady Bunch movie and they took their child that was watching the Brady Bunch at home to the Brady Bunch movie. And the, and the child was just totally confused <laughs> and disappointed. Adults loved it because if you look at that movie, what that movie is about is about us watching our childhood, remembering how it, what, what we were and how far we've come. Because it's really looking back at your childhood and the innocence you, you maintained or had at that, at that time. And then you watch it in context of the movies, sort of working, you know, for these people uncovering, you know, what did they do in the movie? Was it a crime? I, bad guys. It was, but it was fun. And it was one of the first television shows that made, that that made it to feature film. Not that that's a, a short list of it. Right. Another one was, so, oh, right over there. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. He's a big fan of the real Brady Bros. It is. It's a gas. It's a lot of fun. I think one of the, 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 the questions that were most frequently asked, are you really friends? And I think, I think um, Pat, it, 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 without having to say yes, you listen to the show and you see that Barry and I are, are truly, you know, are truly friends. Deep friends. I mean, it's like crazy how, you know, this has been 53 years now. You know, I, other than my own brother and sister, I don't, I, I don't have friends from that era. Chris, you can't be 53. No, I'm not 53. It's 53 <laughs> years ago. There's a few, had a few do it. <laughs> Hard to believe. It seems like yesterday. <laughs> so getting back to Sid and Marty Croft. Now, obviously, they both feel very highly of you, because they actually asked you to speak when you, they got the star on the Walk of Fame. So yeah, how did that feel? Yeah, wait, 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 see. Marty, you need Donnie there. Where is Donnie Marie? You need them. If you're asking me, you need Donnie. Um, I guess they weren't available. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in LA and I'm available. And I, um, I was very touched, because I hadn't kept in touch with Marty over the years. So uh, out of the blue, getting, getting the call to help enshrine them or help them um, at their moment of enshrinement on the Hollywood Walk of Fame was was an honor, um, and uh, you know our 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 time together hadn't been by calendar that long, you know the, the cross, but they 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 cast a long shadow, and they cast a very deep one, you know, and that it that it that it hits us in our at our childhood. I was thinking. You know, I watched Sigmund in the Sea Monster. I love Land of the Lost. Um, and I'm, I've been thinking all these years that I was watching them when I was nine years old. <laughs> and I now look at it and go, no, I'm 15. <laughs> I was 15 and watching them. Hmm. 
I loved them. And, you know, and they, you know, and I might have been too old for them at the time. <laughs> but you know, they um, they they they, 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 they make a product that just strikes you in your childhood bone. You know, your your whatever that wherever that place of magic is. Because if you look at every one of their shows, it's about a magic place. You know, um, a place that doesn't really exist, but you know, there's always, you know, a good, a good message, you know, a good versus evil message. Right. Um, it's all very Brady-like. <laughs> uh, one more question. Yes. Uh, the question is, what do I do these days, and what's coming up? Well, um, Barry and I just started the podcast. Uh, I, I have, a, you know, I'm a brand in the furniture space. Christopher Knight Home is yes. my brand. We actually Which have is, some here. Do you really? Yeah. These could be Christopher Knight Home. You know, they probably are they? These? No, the, the ones actually. We we there. I'll show you where they are. I think <laughs> they're in the you know, office. We, I, we we push something like four thousand different SKUs, so it's really hard to keep up with everything. But um, been quite blessed. It's gone um, better than expected. I had very low expectations, <laughs> so, but it's gone very well. And um, started a production company a couple of years ago, just now. And, and Derek and I will talk about this at the at the close of this, yes. because uh, Derek is the. Um, the proud president or uh, Founder of uh, the California, California Independent Film Festival. In Independent Film Festival. So uh, my production company, uh, former Prodigy um, Inc., has produced its first film. It's a documentary about Williams Syndrome and this lovely uh, um, young lady who, who suffers from Williams Syndrome. And very few people here in the United States know anything about Williams Syndrome. Um, but it's a chromosomal issue. Um, and this girl has this incredible ability to just um, well, light up a room and just literally cause love to flourish. Uh, and it, it happens to be one of the things that somebody with Williams syndrome, assist, Williams syndrome does to people, not just her, but her name was True Love. And it just made sense to follow her story and to tell it to others to help those um, so that they can help support those with Williams Syndrome. And also because it's good for us to see others treating others with, you know, loving respect. And yes, for sure. Well, we look forward to showing you at the Film Festival in November. November 10th. We, we would love to submit, yes. Well, submit, you always have an invite, Chris. Uh, we're already <laughs> submitted. It's called True Love the Film. Another, another uh, exclusive here at Croft Con. There you go. <laughs> I'll, I'll let my partner know. Okay. Bill's gonna Bill, know. Yeah. Okay, uh, one more question. So I thought he had uh, way back there. Okay, you? Um, you and your father, did you have the opportunity to work together? I did. And, um, well, we did the Brady Bunch episode, but that was more Susan's work with my dad. Um, not as an actor. Our styles are way different, uh, but as a director, I did a, 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 a couple of plays uh, with my dad directing. He was a wonderful director. Um, yeah, my dad was the German that you saw, uh, the SS officer on Hogan's Heroes. Whenever they needed somebody who would make everyone else cower, they hired my dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I grew up. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for coming. Derek, thank you. Yay! Thank you. Yeah, it's been a real trip. Yeah, it's a trip. Let's have a trip. And we did that today. And uh, you made it extra special being here. So thank well, you so much. Well, you know, to help you, Derek, to help the theater, and to honor the cross has been my, my great pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. So let's give it up for Mr. Christopher Knight right here. Thank you so much.